Father, we thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the songs that have been sung, the opportunity to worship you in giving. And now, as we prepare to go into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts and that it will grow and that we will grow thereby. We thank you for all this time, this opportunity to look into your word. And as we begin this new series, we ask that you will just touch us in a new and refreshing way. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, we are on to a new series, and the new series that we are on is called Some Assembly Required. One of the favorite, uh, or I shouldn't say one of the favorite, but one of the most well-known uh, places to go and get things for your house is called Ikea. Now, when you go into the Ikea store, everything is set up and arranged and positioned, and it just looks so nice. And so you say, I want that item. When they deliver it to your house, they don't deliver the item. They deliver you a bunch of boxes. And if you're not careful, the instructions for the boxes will be in a foreign language, and you have to try to figure out how to put that thing together. So we all have experiences with putting things together. And now even today on when you're ordering some things, it'll tell you that some assembly is required. But that word some is kind of just put there to not let you know that you got to put everything together. But still, that's the word that they like to use. And so on this series, when we talk about some assembly being required, it's actually a part of our focus for this year of family ministry. And last series, we talked about how, what five functionalities we need to have uh, as a family. And now I, I want to talk about the foundation of the family. And that is the husband and the wife. So we're going to take a couple, a couple of episodes to talk about the husband-wife relationship. My opening statement for today is this. An idea of marriage's foundation is not found entirely in a couple's romanticism. But in their commitment to live a holy life according to God's will. Learning to love as an individual will assist in fully loving your spouse. Learning to love as an individual will assist in fully loving your spouse. So our first episode, our subtopic today is going to be, well, let me say this first. When I was Coming up with, with these uh, subtopics, the, the, the word that kept going through my mind was right. And so today, our first episode, we're going to be talking about having the right mindset, which runs us into our definitions. Our first definition is marriage. Marriage is a state of being united to a person of the opposite sex as husband or wife, in a consensual and contractual relationship recognized by law. The next definition, right. Right is conformed to the constitution of man and the will of God, or to justice and equality, not deviating from the true and the just, and according with truth and duty. And then mindset is a fixed state of mind. Mindset is a fixed state of mind. So we're going to be talking about having the right mindset as we get ready to talk about the husband and wife condition. We're going to start in, we're going to be in Ephesians again. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse. Ephesians, the first chapter, starting at the first verse. What did I say? The, 
Okay, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, starting at the first verse. English Standard Version. We're going to be going all the way today. It's going to be a long one because we're going all the way to the 21st because we've got to set this foundation. And it says, Therefore, be intimidators, intimidators of God. Do I, what do I keep saying? Oh, okay, thank you. Therefore, be in imitators I don't know why I'm reading that wrong right now therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God but sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you as is proper among saints let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor cruel joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, but because these things... The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our heart in Jesus' name. Now, I went through all that to set up this entire series because we have to have, if we're going to talk about foundations, we got to have a foundation for our foundations. The first point that I would love to talk about in this is when we are building a house, or when they're building a, 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 a building, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize that they at least make the foundation of the building at least half the length of what it will be above ground. But we don't see that. So a lot of times you'll see construction and you'll be like, are they doing anything? It's because they're digging deep to establish the foundation. The foundation has to be solid because once they put the weight of the building upon it, it needs to be on something that is stable. So we have to ensure that we have a good understanding of what a good foundation is. We have to have our focus, our mind, looking at establishing, shoring up the foundation of our lives. So to start off talking about some assembly required is that we have to understand that our relationship is not coming fully assembled. There are some things that we have to do in order to put it together properly. But to, to me, what I want to express today is the, the fact is that the key to this is that we have to ensure that we are firmly 
on a solid foundation before we start bringing on the stressors of an additional relationship. So we must ensure that we have this foundational relationship with God who made us, and as we are conforming to the image of Christ, what it enables us to do, it enables us to bring this other person in so that we can love, that we can show, that we can respect one another just like God would. Now, that doesn't happen as a eureka moment. It doesn't happen at the ceremony. It doesn't happen within the first year. But the process begins, and depending on how solid our foundation is, is how quickly we can get to the building process. Now, some folks get, get married and they don't even know Jesus, so they have to come back together and kind of rearrange some things so that they can get into the right position. And how, have y'all ever wondered, I, well, I'm going to ask y'all, I've always wondered how come Lady Yolanda just can't be right and just do it the way I want to do it? I just always wondered that, but... I'm quite sure she wonders the same thing. And so we have to make adjustments in how we approach one another so that we can effectively work together. A lot of people don't realize that marriage is God's reflection of who he is and how he functions. <laughs> Something ran through my head. I just had to let it continue to walk. So we have to let ourselves understand that we are an example to others of how God functions. How we operate in our marital relationship is an example to others of how God functions. When we are operating in our marital relationships, we are reflecting how God functions. When we come together as husband and wife and are interacting with one another, we are uh, reflecting how God functions. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that how our relationship is set up it is a reflection of how God functions. Now, in order to get an under, a, a true understanding of that, we have to be connected to God in order to understand how God functions. So as we look through this Ephesians, the first chapter, uh, first verse of the fifth chapter down to the 21st verse, Paul is, what he's doing is, he's getting ready to talk about the marital relationship, but before he can do that, he has to talk about the foundation and having the right mindset as we go forward. The right mindset is not us being uh, focused on us, but it's us focusing on others. As we have talked about before, if you want to be first in the kingdom of heaven, what must you do? You have to be the servant of all. And so we want to pull in that type of mindset, take it into our relationship, and then our relationship reflects how God operates. And so he brings out that we want to follow God's example. We want to walk in the way of love. We want to do things in the way that God will do them. And we want to operate in the love of God. Now, there's different types of love, but the unconditional love, the agape love, love in spite of, love because of, is where we want to reach. And so in order to love God's way, we have to have God's level of love. And so Paul is bringing out the type of behaviors as you uh, go through this and read it. You'll see he says, don't do this, but do this. Don't do that, but do that because he's saying 
This is maybe how you were doing things before, but to operate in the God's level of love, this is what you should be doing. We should be ensuring that we have the proper communication and that, that, the, uh, that we shouldn't be talking foolish, crazy, vulgar, or we should not be trying to uh, be harsh to, when we communicate. We should be uh, wise in everything we do. We don't uh, uh, allow ourselves to get tied up in immorality or things that are not giving God glory, that our life should be a reflection of God's holiness and that we should communicate properly and that we should be wise. And so we see how Paul is setting this up. He hasn't said a thing about husband or wives yet. He is focusing on the individuals because if we get your personal foundation straight, when we come together, it's easier to combine two good foundations instead of two broken foundations. So we want to establish who we are in Christ first and then be able to interact with the other believer. And so we want to Ensure that the righteous living that we are doing is not just because we're married, it's because of our relationship with God. And so we want to operate in that way. And so uh, we have come and we have seen how people, when they are on the, uh, how do you want to say, on the, uh, track of getting married, they're, they're dating, they're spending time together, and they're doing all these things, a lot of times everyone puts their best foot forward so that you get the best look of this. Um, Lady Yolanda was showing me a, a video of, this, of a young lady doing makeup, and the before picture and the after picture was two different pictures. And at first, I thought, I actually thought, I'm being honest, I actually thought that it was just two different people. But then she said, no, baby, you got to look at this. And she would put the stuff here and did it all kind of clown. And, and then she did some more stuff. And then she did, I'm like, how much stuff she going to put on? She like, she, she ain't even done. She took so long that they had to do the fast action stuff. So she was moving all quick and quick and quick and and I was like, Lord Jesus, and that dude going to get all messed up. There's a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm laughing too on the inside right now. And there's a movie that uh, came out a long time ago. The name of the movie is called I'm Going to Get You, Sucker. And in that movie, we had this situation where the guy is taking this lady, nice-looking singing lady, he takes it to her, to her room, and everything is going well, and, and they're getting a little bit romantic, and she says, okay, let me get comfortable. And he, so he's sitting in the chair, and she starts getting comfortable. The first thing she takes off is her wig, and she throws her wig at him, and she's laughing, <laughs> and he throws the wig all over the place, and... Then she takes out one of her eyes. And then, so then he's sitting there like, what? But then the thing that got to him was when she pulled her leg off and threw it at him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Everything was not what it seemed. So we want to operate in a level of integrity and honesty. Listen, I have no problem with makeup. I have no problem with that at all. I think that there. It is very easy for us to do anything to an extreme that could make it unhealthy. Not saying that this young lady was doing anything unhealthy. I'm just saying from what she started off with to what she finished up at, it, it took her, it looked like it took, to me, it looked like it took two hours. Now, to me, it, it, you should only take about 20 minutes to put on makeup, but that's because I don't wear none, so I don't know how long it takes you. But anyway, my point is that we have to kind of not focus on what the world says the standard should be and focus on what God says the standard should be for us to be complete and whole in who we are because we don't want to have an unstable foundation and then bring the weight of a relationship into our unsettledness because all that does is cause increase, uh, increasing damage to our foundation. 
So we want to make sure that we're on a solid foundation, that we're walking in truth and honesty and holiness, and that we're standing up for righteousness so that when we walk in it, that whenever things come, it doesn't unsettle us, but that we are firmly placed in the situation. There are, I remember when we were living in Texas, um, Lady Yolanda was uh, part of a program where if you decided to do premarital counseling, they actually gave you a discount on your uh, wedding, not wedding, let's not call it a marriage license. marriage license. I was going to say wedding certificate, but it's not a wedding certificate, it's a marriage license. Why? Because marriage is one of the few things that has such a heavy, heavy, heavy result or has a potential of causing heavy, heavy situations, but we don't provide people with a mandatory process to make sure that they're qualified to get it. You got to go through driver's training to get your driver's license. If you want to be a trucker, you got to go through additional training. If you want to drive a motorcycle, you got additional training. Fellas, watch it. And so we have to ensure, I'm talking to you three. So we have to ensure that everything is going in a direction that is going to provide us with what we need in order to go forward. We want to strengthen it. We want to provide. And it has been proven that folks that get marriage counseling or premarital counseling have a 30% stronger marriage than those who don't. So if it's going to give me a 30% chance of being successful, why would I not do it? That, I, you don't have to answer. I just wanted to throw that out there. The next thing that I want to talk about is, is that we have to understand a thing that, that Gary Chapman called love languages. Love languages are that way in which we like to receive the communication of love. And there are five primary love languages, but there are hundreds of dialects upon that. Now, what we like to do is we like to communicate in the way that we like to receive. And once we understand that, then we have to change our process so that we communicate so that our spouse can receive. Let's say, for instance, if your love language is, let's say, giving gifts. And your spouse's is words of affirmation. When they come in and they say, oh, you're, you just look so nice today and you look so, it, it doesn't have the effect to you, but they feel good because that's what makes them feel good. But if they walk in with a little, with, they, they went next door to the neighbors and pulled up some of their roses, cut off some of their roses, and bring, they ro bring those roses into the house and say, hey, I was thinking about you and I got you these roses. I, know, I shouldn't have said the other part because, but anyway, they brought you some roses. You're going to be, you're going to be, oh, you thought about me. You brought me this gift and it makes me feel good. One of the situations that I am seeing a lot of is that it's so easy for us to communicate in our love language that we, uh, we believe that because I'm communicating in my language that you should feel how I feel because it's my language. Now, how many of y'all know that if you speak French and your spouse speaks Spanish, y'all not going to communicate too well together? And it's going to become frustrating. And it's going to become discouraging. And it's going to become frustrating, discouraging, and then it's going to make you angry. It's going to become frustrating, discouraging, make you angry, and then it's going to make you not want to be around one another. It's going to make you frustrated, angry, not want to be around, discouraged. It's going to do all these things, and next thing you say, we have no compatibility. They, 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 in, a, in, a, in the court system, they call it irreconcilable differences. We just don't like each other no more. 
So if we understand that as I'm establishing my foundation, I have to know who I am in Christ. I have to know that who God created me to be. And when I know that and I can stand firmly on that, when I bring someone else into my life, I can help them to help me to help them to love me. Y'all get that? If I know that my love language, for instance, is words of affirmation, I can say, if you want me to feel good, then affirm me, celebrate me. Right? If I have a, if a, if it's physical touch, then hold my hand, put your arm around me, hold me. Be you know, we have to communicate one to one another to what makes me feel like I am a part of this relationship. And the same thing that we have to do when we are talking or interacting with God. We have to understand what God's love language is. God's love language is loving others unconditionally. That's his love language. He wants us to reflect his love language to everyone that we encounter. So that means he wants us to show folks love even when they do things that are unlovable. It's not to validate what they've done, but to show that there is a level of concern for that person so that they can know that they don't have to stay or be the way that they are. That there's something different, there's something more that they can grab a hold of and be a part of. And so when we're diving into this, as we're looking at this, as we're journeying through this next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about the uh of course we got ladies go first so paul next he talks about the, the woman's role in the relationship then he talks about the man's role in the relationship so we're going to kind of go down that same pathway and this is not an opportunity for us to point fingers and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. It is an opportunity for us to understand the process and God's design for marriage. Because again, God's design for marriage is a reflection of his relationship with men. He wants to show us in a physical uh, form of how he desires for us to operate. I want to say this, and then we're going to call it a day for today, that God created man, then he created woman, and during this whole process, he made sure that they understood that they were for each other that they were for each other, that they were for each other, that they both had a part in this, and their part was not designed to be uh, uh, separate, but it's to be together. One of the things that I think about when I think about that, when it talks about a man should leave his mother and his father, and he shall cleave unto his wife, I always think about one of the, things that we used to do back in the day when we were out on patrol and you getting tired and, and you guys have stopped and you're trying to get a rest, what you would do is you would sit back to back and you would kind of lean on one another. And so it would be like, okay, man, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, close my eyes for about two or three minutes. And you close your eyes and you get your little nap in and he bump you and wake you up and then he take his turn. The only problem was when both of y'all was really tired because then you could get left. But the, the point was you had that person that was looking out for you and you were looking out for them. And that's the same way, the same dynamic that God wants for marital relationships. It's not about an uh, individual part getting its way. It's about us coming into harmony and unity and operating for the good of the relationship. The good of the relationship is greater than the good of the individual. Y'all need me to say that again? The good of the relationship 
is greater than the good of the individual. Why? Because two is better than one. Two is better than one, as we heard in the video. Because when one falls, if no one's around to help you up, you're going to stay in that ditch. But if someone is there to assist you and to help you out, then you can continue on in your journey. So as I said, because this year is the year of family, I wanted to, right as we get ready to start the school year out, talk about this is the lanes for husbands and wives as they go forward. I think that's all I want to say about that for today. So we're going to go along this journey for the next couple of weeks to talk about this very uh, significant point. Now, I do want to say this. You that are watching via Facebook, those that are in the room, the key to this is that you have to have a relationship. You need to have this relationship. This is part of what will help you along this journey is having a relationship with God. In order to ascertain that relationship, you have to realize that you need Jesus in your life. Jesus has done everything that is necessary so that you can be reconciled, that's reconnected back to God. And, he, and the Bible says it like this. It says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth confession is made, and you are saved. And so we want to provide you with an opportunity to understand that all this that we're discussing, the foundation is a spiritual foundation. You can love a person, you can, but the spiritual aspect is even greater than the physical assets, aspect. And so the Bible says it like this. It says, so whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the word saved means rescued and delivered. And the Bible also says that you are bound or you are on a course for, for uh, sin, and uh, sin, which is separation from God. But God does not want that to be the result of your life. He wants you to have an abundant life. He wants you to have eternal life. And the way we get that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you make that decision today, we want you to let us know by contacting us, by contacting us at this number. Eight six four nine two zero zero one zero zero. That's our text line. Text us and let us know that you made a decision today. And we will get with you and reply back to you because this is not an individual event. This is a team sport, and we want to help you along this journey. If you don't want to text, you can email us at info at godshousecc.com. And again, we will get back with you and help you and assist you along this new journey. Well, friends and family. That is it for our first episode of our series, Some Assembly Required. The subtopic today was having the right mindset. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, so that you can walk and be all that God has called for you to be. Well, we'll do uh, episode number two next week. So, until next week, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.